Hello, how's the mystery quilt going? Um, I just thought I'd uh, show you what we're going to do for part two. Have you downloaded your pattern yet? You can get the pattern from um, gourmetquilter.com under mystery quilts. I'll just quickly recap what we did last month. Last month we cut out um, some squares of our background fabric and we cut out squares of our colours that were um, the that we needed and then we made some half square triangles and we'd also filled in our fabric chart with the samples of the fabrics that we're using so that we can easily see them um, by the label that I've given them so that your fabrics correspond to that quite easily so and we so we did all that last month and we've set that aside to be used later so we'll set that aside now and I'll show you what we're doing this month so I've got everything cut out ready here in your um, pattern that you're downloading will tell you all the details of what you're cutting but mostly we've cut some background strips we've cut some different two different length strips of our colors and we've cut some little squares of the colors and so in your pattern as well as all the um, general instructions for cutting and things you'll also find a sheet with numbers on it and when we've done some sewing I'll show you how we're going to use those and they will help you put the quilt together later on without too much confusion hopefully. So let's get sewing. So on to some sewing. So you should have a, pa a page that looks something like that in the pattern that you've downloaded from gourmetquilter.com and I'm going to just do a little bit of the sewing just to show you how I do it and I'm actually working on these two rows here you can see that they're in pairs and the rows I'm working on are these ones so if I turn the page up that way it will look a little bit like what I've laid down here so I've got my L fabric here and then my background then my M and some background and then my G fabric now this is where this chart here that that you made up with all your fabric samples on will come in handy because this will show you that this is your L fabric that this is your M fabric and that this is your G fabric so hopefully you've got one of those charts because then you won't have the confusion that you might otherwise have so now I'm just going to show you how I sew them together because they're two rows that are the same and I can chain piece them and hopefully keep it in so I've laid them all out in order so that I don't get in a muddle when I'm sewing them so I just need to join them up into these long strips so I'm just going to pick up my first L piece and the background piece and just with my quarter inch seam allowance I'm just going to sew that and then I can pick up the next row as well the next two pieces because we're working along the strips with the same pieces each time so you can do the other pairs the same way as this I'll just show you on this this pair of strips so then I need my next colour so I'll lay that on to there so you can see this doesn't take too long if you get a little bit organised in the beginning that labelling of your fabrics is uh, pretty important in a mystery quilt because you're probably using different fabrics to me as well and it's all a bit of a mystery and goodness me what are these strips going to make very mysterious I think so then I'm picking up the next piece of background according to that diagram so just if you're not too sure just keep checking back with your diagram that's in your pattern Oops. colour to go on these strips last colour G and then we'll give them a quick press and I'll show you how to label them labelling is pretty important with mysteries because then you won't get confused we hope Okay, so now we just need to cut those two strips apart so that we can get at them to piece them. I find this is quite good because I can kind of double check back on myself that my rows are coming up the same way. So I'll just bring that iron in a bit closer. OK, 
like I usually press into the colour so that it doesn't show through on my lighter background that I've got there. And that's one strip pressed already. Quickly do the next one. I love a mystery. Don't you love a mystery? You have no idea what's going to come up next. Okay, so I don't need the iron anymore. Okay, so we've done our two quite long strips. So if you look at the diagram again, these are the strips. If I turn it up this way, you can see that this is my these two strips here. We've got that grey, the yellow, and a green with a background in between. So in your pattern you will have received one of these which I'd now like you to cut up into the individual numbers like I've got here. And in this pattern sheet again, on this end of each row I've popped a number there. So this is the number that I'd like you to pin to the, to the left hand end, to the end that is closest to this first strip here. So my bottom one's here. I've already cut these. I'm going to pin number 13 onto one of the L fabrics there. And the same on the next one, I'm going to pin number 17 also onto one of the L fabrics. So that now you can see that I've got I'll just lay all these out here. I've already done my other strips and they're just ready here. So we're getting very confused here. Okay. So we've got, according to this diagram here, we've got strip one with an A fabric and then five with an A fabric. Then we've got row seven and 11 coming down the side here and then 13 and 17. So if you label all those, when we need those, we'll know which one we're trying to use. So I'm just going to pop those aside now. That's all the sewing for this time. So we've done a bit of cutting. We've done a bit of sewing. We're looking very, very mysterious. I wonder what it's going to look like. And so we need to set those apart. Now we've still got some bits left over that we had cut. So if you want to set those aside. We have some bits that we had set aside from part one. So they're part one. You may want to label all these separately into their parts. I'm not sure how you want to do that. But I would like to keep all mine together in a little tray like that. And I've got the rest of my numbers that we had cut up. I'll be needing those later on. And I keep my fabric chart with my fabrics and things. So that I know exactly where I'm at. So you can see how <clears throat> you can see how useful this fabric chart is going to be to help you work out some of the fabrics that we're using. And we'll set those aside and we'll see you next next month with the next part. Thank you.